This week we're going to be continuing on with descriptive statistics and start talking about a number that can represent how close together the data are to one another or how far apart. So as an example to help us get to this, let's look at these five kids. Let's imagine that they all belong to the same family. And you can see based on their ages in the bottom that they are pretty close together in terms of age. Uh, Eight-year-old, a nine-year-old, a ten-year-old, an eleven-year-old, and a twelve-year-old. So five children all close together. That would show us that there is little variability in this data or that the data are clumped together and have low dispersion. However, if you had the same set of kids who all were three years set apart, so we had a four-year-old, a seven-year-old, a ten-year-old, a thirteen-year-old, and a sixteen-year-old, we would be talking about the same amount of data, but if you were to graph this, the numbers would be farther apart from one another. They would be more spread out, meaning there would be more dispersion. So essentially, measures of dispersion are um, numbers that help us know how much variability is in the data, how close together the, the data is, or how spread out the data is. So here we see some actual distributions, and distribution A would be a distribution where there's more dispersion because it's spread out from one another, and distribution B is closer together. The first kind of dispersion measure that we know about to help us understand these pictures is the range. And the range is a number that we can take by simply taking the largest value in our data set and subtracting the smallest value in our data set. So back to these pictures, if you looked at the lowest value of A and the lowest value of, or sorry, the highest value of A and subtracted those, you would get a bigger number than you would in the case of B, where if you subtracted the lowest from the highest, it's a smaller number. You can see this represented by the bar underneath the graph where the purple line, and the purple bar, is shorter than the blue bar uh, because that means that there's less range. Another kind of variability is the variance, and a way of thinking about the variance is the mean of the squared deviation scores, and to help us understand that, let's look at the actual calculations. So the top formula here is the variance for a population, the bottom number, or the bottom formula is the variance for a sample. They both do the same thing, and we'll just look at the top one, the population variance, to help us understand what this formula is doing. So there we see our summation notation sign again, the M on its side. And here what it wants you to do is it wants you to sum up all of the data points subtracting the actual mean value. So this is a deviation score. It's essentially a way to figure out how much does each data point deviate from the mean. You would square those values, uh, sum them all up, and then divide it by N. So we get a mean because we're dividing by the number that exists there on the bottom of the squared deviation scores. Now these numbers aren't really that intuitive because when you come up with a value of variance, essentially it's a value that is in squared units because of the fact that we're actually squaring in this formula. So in order to get rid of those squared units, because we don't really think in squared units, right? When I ask you how tall you are, you don't say 15 inches squared. Um, we need to take the actual square, uh, square root of those values. And this gets us to the standard deviation. And the standard deviation is probably the most important measure of variability or measure of dispersion that we're going to be talking about. So the uh, standard deviation for the population is up on top and the standard deviation for the sample, which can either be little s or sometimes will be referred to as capital S, capital D, is on the bottom. And you can see that essentially we're just taking a square root of the values that we got on the previous screen, so the square root of the variance on both the top and the bottom. So essentially it's the same number as the variance, it's just a square root version so that we're not talking about squared units anymore. One of the things that happens in measures of variability is that if you have an outlier, it can pull your variability um, or increase your variability. So here we have our children again, uh, and the four on the right are still one year apart, but now the fifth cut, the fifth kid on the far left is only a one year old. So he doesn't fall into the close together knit age groups of the four on the right. Um, he's going to be pulling the data. So extreme scores increase variability. Just keep that in mind. So what use is variability? Well, this is something that we're going to spend a lot of time talking about next week, but I want you to um, focus mostly on the standard deviation this week because standard deviations are especially helpful. This is a graph of a normal distribution that we've seen before, and there's a lot of different symbols and numbers uh, that we will talk more in depth about next week. But please note how the mean is given by the mu and that on the bottom the, the x-axis is labeled with additions of standard deviations to that mu.